Hello everyone, um, this is Camelia Douglas. Uh, I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, um, also known as a PMHMP. Um, I'm also a nursing and mental health enthusiast. Um, so I am getting on today uh, to sort of continue with where I started um, with a series of um, obtaining a, or, or performing a psychiatric interview. Um, the last video I did um, and posted about a week ago was basically sort of the ins and outs of a psychiatric interview, some things to be mindful of. Um, and so this week, what I want to do is really dig in and talk more about specific questions. Um, and of course, the goal at the end of this um, over the next few videos is to continue to chunk information um, for the psychiatric interview so that you guys can get a clearer picture of how uh, you get a patient who comes into your office um, from point A to point B. Um, I talked about time, um, which is very important um, for the very first visit with a patient. Um, if you are seeing an adult patient, typically, again, that looks like uh, being allotted at least 45 minutes to an hour, um, and, and in most cases for uh, pediatric or and uh, adolescent patients, um, you are typically seeing the patient for at least an hour to an hour and a half um, for this first interview. Um, so this is important and what I am focusing on um, is mainly for the outpatient setting. Um, there are a lot of these questions that may be applicable to the emergency room um, or inpatient. Um, but again, my focus today is to focus on, on the component of the psychiatric interview um, with introduction and obtaining psychiatric history. Um, so just so you guys know, um, you know, with me going in to see a patient or if I see a patient by telehealth, um, for that very first visit, um, I'm very open and honest, transparent about the, to the patient, um, their expectations and kind of what they could have, can expect for the first visit. Um, and so what I typically do is introduce myself. Um, I may say something like, my name is Camelia. Um, I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Um, I'll let them know what my role in their care is and what it's going to be. Um, and I will also let them know what they can expect for that first visit. So I usually tell the patient that um, for this very first visit, I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you today. Um, these questions will be mainly about your history, challenges, symptoms, and really what that will help me to do is fill in some gaps from what you've already completed. Now, keep in mind that patients are going to come to you uh, with information already filled out. Sometimes that includes an intake form. Other times that may include uh, information from a referring provider, such as a primary care physician, and, and or you may be getting information from a patient's history if, if they came from um, maybe the emergency room or uh, if they came from possibly an inpatient admission. Um, so you may have other sources of uh, information um, or a means of obtaining other information before the patient gets to you. Um, and you just wanna be very transparent with the patient about what your role is and uh, why you're gonna be asking the questions that you'll be asking them. Okay, and I found that that just helps uh, to sort of alleviate some of the anxiety that patients have with meeting you for the first time, um, but it also helps to clear up their expectations. And I also let them know the why. So the reason that these questions are important um, is because I want to be able to uh, put some pieces together for you and I to come up with a treatment plan um, that is most appropriate for you by the end of the visit today. Um, and so I usually say those words to patients so that they know exactly what my goal is, what our goal is, um, and why it's important for them to, one, be honest, but also to give me the information that's necessary um, within reason, what they can give me, um, so that we can come up with the best treatment plan for them, okay? Um, there's nothing cookie cutter about psych psychiatry or mental health, so every treatment plan should really be based on specific information that you get from each individual patient. Um, and so that's one of the things that I, I talk with patients about from, from the beginning. Um, then I dig into their chief complaint. So I may ask a very general question to a patient by saying, um, tell me what brings you in today? Um, or how did you get to this office today? What brought you um, or what's led up to you coming into the office today? Um, and then you may get 
many things. You may get the patient giving you lots of information, sometimes extra information. Um, but again, the, the key is the balance between letting the patient do most of the talking and you are being able to uh, prompt them toward uh, other questions that may be more helpful for you to get more information. Um, so this is a time where I actually let the patients talk first. Um, that's just been my practice and it seems to work really well because it does give you a very good idea um, for patients that are uh, able to give you that history um, from with what they've um, sort of uh, what got them to where they are. Um, and so um, most patients will be able to tell you specific information. Um, and so it'll really help you to come up with uh, the best treatment plan for them. Okay, so um, introducing myself to the patient, then asking uh, what brought them into to the visit for the office, um, and that becomes your chief complaint. Um, from there, uh, if a patient says, um, uh, well, I've had this before, uh, or the patient may say that um, I've seen someone before for this, um, I sort of start with the psychiatric history first. Um, and sometimes patients may talk more about what's going on presently without going into their history. And so I do use that as sort of a lead way to talk about um, what their history is. So I may ask a patient after they've told me what brought them into the office, um, I may go on to say something like, um, tell me if this has come up for you before. Um, and I may ask if uh, the patient, I usually ask if they've ever seen a psychiatrist or anyone who's ever prescribed medications or if they've ever seen someone uh, such as a therapist or a counselor. Um, that also gives you some general idea of their history uh, for mental health. Um, I would also I typically ask patients um, if they were prescribed any medications before. And um, if patients were prescribed medications, um, then I typically go into uh, the next question is, what do you remember about those medications? Um, I can tell you that if patients have had a significant side effect from a medication, they likely will remember that. Um, one thing that patients don't usually remember is the dose of the medication that they, they were taking. Um, I, I do ask specifics about the names of medications. Um, what will that help you with as a provider? Um, it will help you to know um, if they've tried a certain class of medicines um, that have been particularly helpful or if they've had um, side effects and you'll be able to sort of develop maybe a pattern of how a patient may respond. Um, the second thing that that will help you with is really being able to um, determine which route to go next with the medications if you're prescribing medications. So people always sort of think about mental health as um, medication only, um, but there's a, a huge spectrum of treatment. So it doesn't mean that medications have to be a part of the plan, um, but you do wanna know that history for a patient um, and what medication specifically they were prescribed before. Um, I do ask patients about dosages. Um, why is that important? Uh, because sometimes patients may say, oh, that medication was never helpful. Well, other times it may be because they were undertreated dose-wise. Um, they may have had a side effect if they were um, treated pretty aggressively with the medication before. So sometimes if you can get dosage um, information, that will help guide your treatment as well. And again, that's if you're prescribing medications. Um, you also want to know when they took the medication um, because sometimes we hear uh, that patients were really young and they took medications at a really young age. Um, keep in mind that the brain is still developing up until about age 25. So that's important um, because sometimes the brain is just more hypersensitive to medications. And so if patients took medications within a certain age range, um, then they may have had an adverse response um, to something. It doesn't mean that they're going to have that again. Okay. Um, it's also important to know if they were taking that medication, whatever it was, with something else. Um, and so that will help maybe point you toward um, what, be, what may be more helpful for, for the patient going forward. Okay. Um, I also uh, typically ask patients um, about previous hospitalizations. And uh, my question there typically is, have you ever been hospitalized or been to the emergency room for symptoms of uh, severe anxiety, depression, or any thoughts or actions around harming yourself. Um, that's very key and very important because it gives you 
um, a general idea of acuity of patient symptoms. It helps to also um, understand um, sometimes around emotional regulation um, and uh, responses to stressors. Um, you also want to get a clear history of uh, if patients know what they were treated for before. There are times where they may have been misdiagnosed, but there are other times where if a patient has a particular condition um, and they've been diagnosed with that, they may not be able to capture that they went to the emergency room for something specifically, but knowing that they had a history of something also may give you an idea that they are possibly higher acuity uh, or um, some of their symptoms may lead to another hospitalization if, if they're not managed. So there are various conditions where that may apply. Um, you also want to be sure that you're screening for patient safety. So that's also um, you wanting to know, has there been an attempt before to harm themselves? Um, you also want to know if they have a history of any self-injurious behavior, such as burning or cutting. Um, or anything um, that you would consider self-injurious. Um, and you also wanna know if they have a history of violence um, or any thoughts of hurting anyone else, any history of that. Um, so that gives you a con the context of acuity, safety. It also gives you some context for um, possibly their history um, and whether this has come up before, but also um, whether, uh, your treatment plan may include medications or psychotherapy, both. Um, it may help point you to the right direction with their treatment plan. Um, so those are the few questions that I typically ask related to psychiatric history. Um, again, you may have a patient who tells you all of those things from the beginning, but these are just ways that you can prompt the patient um, to answer those questions a little bit more clearly. Um, so um, I do want to end the video here um, because this is uh, the chunk of information for introduction in psychiatric history, chief complaint psychiatric history, um, which is where I start with every patient. Um, and so the next video, um, what we'll talk about will be um, the patient's family history, and we'll talk about why that's important. Um, so I'm hopeful that this video is some helpful to some of you. Again, I'm going to be creating a template with some of these questions um, to use as a reference or a guide. Um, but um, again, th these are there will be a series of videos that will continue to chalk the information for psychiatric interview. Um, if you guys have anything that you want to add to this, let me know. Um, definitely uh, put that in the chat. Um, comment below. Let me know um, what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you. Again, and let's just stay engaged here to support and really help one another. Um, so I will see you guys then in the next video. Thank you.